Rubik. I'm an engineer here at Statsig, and today we're going to talk about Experiments Plus. Um, so Experiments Plus is a product we offer that allows you to very easily run A, B, N experiments. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what A, B tests are or what multivariate tests are, uh, we have a few other YouTube videos that can help um, help explain those to you. Uh, I'll link them in the, dis uh, in the description below, but their names are What is A-B Testing, Running an A-B Test, and What is Statistical Significance in an A-B Experiment. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, uh, please go watch those videos first, and then this one will be a lot more helpful. Okay, so with that, uh, let's dive into Experiments Plus. So you can access Experiments Plus by clicking on the Experiments Plus button on the left uh, navigation rail. If you have existing or previously run experiments, you'll see them listed here. Uh, if you've never run an experiment on StatSig before, um, you can go and create a new one using the Create button. Okay. So that takes you to the experiment creation flow. Uh, we can give our new experiment a name. Let's say demo experiment for video and a description, an experiment created for the demo video. Once you filled those two in, uh, the description being optional, there are also some advanced settings below. Most people likely won't need these, um, but we do offer them for more advanced use cases. The first one is ID type. So you'll see here we have a few different options. Um, the standard options are user ID and stable ID. Company ID is something that is configured on a per project basis. But basically what this means is what is the kind of unit of experimentation in your product. So for example, if you are running experiments where you care about tracking a specific user through their journey across different uh, devices, um, you would want a user ID based experiment. Um, if you want to track logged out experiments where a user ID may not exist, you can use stable ID, where the ID, the unit of experimentation is actually each individual device, such as a phone or a browser that is using your product. Additional ones like company ID can be used if, let's say you're a product like StatSig that builds products for other products, uh, for other companies, and um, you want to track metrics at the company level. Okay. So we default to user ID. Um, the other option is layers. So layers are a way to enforce experiments not overlapping. Okay, so let's say we have 10 different experiments we're running at any given time, and each of them, the test and control, take up 50% of all of our users. That means every user is at any given time in 10 different experiments, um, test or control for any of those 10. and most of the time, that's perfectly fine uh, because those overlaps are random and so we can still get very meaningful metrics. However, there are certain cases where two experiments may have significant interaction. Um, for example, let's say I was running one experiment that changed the color of this create button to green and I had another experiment that changed it to red. If we were to run those two experiments on the same set of users, finally they only see one color on this button, so one of those experiments will override the other, and that will hurt our experiment results. So that is the type of you know, pretty specific situation where we want to use a layer, and we can guarantee that my green button experiment and my red button experiment aren't, on, aren't being run on the same set of users. So most of the time, uh, we don't actually need a layer. So now that we're done with that, we can create the experiment. Once we create an experiment, uh, we come to this view where now we get to configure kind of more of the nitty gritty details of our experiment. So the first step is allocation percentage. So this is of our of my total you know user set, what percentage of those should actually be even eligible for this experiment? So the max for this would be 100% which means every user who uses my product will either be will be in one of the test groups for this experiment or the control. Now, there is a trade-off here. 
um, the larger the allocation percentage, the more statistical power you have because you have more users, more data for your experiment. However, if I'm running a maybe a risky experiment where I'm not sure if my test group is good or bad, it may be very bad, I may not want to start with a large experiment. I may want to start with, let's say, 5%, so that only a small percentage of users are exposed to that test variant that might be not good. Right? The other thing we can do is we can set up a targeting gate. So this means uh, only users who satisfy this targeting gate, which is a feature gate, will be eligible for the experiment. This can be used to do things like target an experiment to only users who use Android or iOS or users who you know, are in a certain country, etc. Um, and that's just a detail of how you want to run your experiment. Uh, maybe the experiment only really makes sense among a certain demographic. The next step is configuring each of the groups in your experiment. So we allow you to have unlimited number of groups for an experiment. The minimum is two, right? So a control group, which is expected to kind of be your production uh, experience. And then at least one test group, which is kind of an alternative experience that you are experimenting with. So here we have the sample parameter um, in the control group. So in production, it's false. In our test group, it's true. We can add additional parameters. So let's say sample string parameter. And then we choose the type. Is it a string, number, Boolean, and so on. And then we can add that. And then we can add values. So example use cases if I'm testing out some different text. So for example, maybe this parameter controls this text here. This configure the parameters for each group. So my control would be that. And maybe here I want to say, choose the parameters for each group. Now I'm just trying out a slightly different wording and see what happens. Okay, we can add additional groups. So you know, it defaults to test number two. It defaults to splitting the allocation of these users up here, this 5%, across the three or how many of groups it is evenly. Uh, but we can always change that. I can always make this different number. Um, and as you see, the control just automatically takes the rest of the 100%. So these, well, this, these numbers were always at 100. Okay. And finally, this lets you just take a look at what, um, how, how reading parameters would look like for this experiment using different client or server SDKs. So this just makes it really easy to figure out how to reference this experiment in your code. And finally, we let you choose key metrics for your experiment. Um, you'll see what this does in the next step, but what we can say, you know, for this experiment, maybe, you know, I'm interested in how many people are starting experiments because I'm changing the text of this. So start experiment is an important one for me. Okay, now when we go back up to the top, and we say save. Okay, now the experiment is not yet started. Uh, we just save this configuration. To actually start the experiment, we click start. And this will actually now start the experiment. So, you know, some percentage of users will start seeing these different parameters that we've set up here. Cool. So now that we've gone through the setup flow, let's see what happens for an experiment that's been running for some time. So now you can see this demo experiment for video is in progress. So let's go to another experiment we have, um, sample company experiment. So after a while, this experiment you can see started on November 7th, 12 days ago. Um, and you can see that we've had exposures to this experiment. So there are total in total been 131 different units exposed to the control, 119 to the test. Now it's a 50-50 experiment, so that's fairly close. I mean, it's never, it's usually not gonna be perfectly fit, um, match the allocation percentage. And below we can see the results. So in this case, uh, we actually have no key results 
configured for this experiment, so we don't see any. But we can see all of the other metrics we have in the system um, down below. Now for reading these metrics, we have other videos that go through Pulse. Um, this is the same Pulse experience across feature gates and so on. So I will link a video to the um, I will link the video that goes over Pulse and how to use it, how to analyze these results um, and make sense of things in the description. Once your experiment is done, you know you're you're happy and feel good about the results you've collected. Um, you can then go and click the Make Decision button and choose a group to ship. So either you decide the test that you ran is not great, um, you want to stick with the status quo, which is the production or control group, you click control and then you go ship, or if your results were good, you can do test, and that means you, know, you believe your test is good, it's an improvement to your product, and you can ship that. I hope that was helpful and uh, you learned about how to use experiments. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to message us on Slack or leave comments on this video. Thank you.